YouTube is Pride Phillips. Look at this. We've got the P51 UMX Ultra Micro Extreme from E Flight. We are so glad to be bringing you this early release. Super exciting stuff. We just got done doing our unbox build radio setup, removable landing gear. One of the new features on this, besides the awesome paint scheme, is that we have this battery tray, which is really nice. I know it seems like kind of a minor detail, but the last P51 we had did not have that. This comes equipped with Safe Select and AS3X. Of course, we have just a beautiful 3S or 2S compatible power plant, which is gonna be exciting. And we are flying ours, just full disclosure, on 300 milliamp 3S, which is a, uh, it's a spectrum lineup, but this is not a smart battery. Just to be clear, the smart batteries have too big a chip, and maybe sometime in the future, we're gonna have smart tech in there. Throttle cuts off. We are out of safe. And yes, we do have full telemetry, which, well, full range telemetry for UMX. So we actually do have voltage, even though it's not a smart pack, which is super cool. All right, here we go. We're gonna do a little back taxi. Look how great that thing taxis. We mentioned it in our unbox, which you guys will see directly following the maiden flight. But if you look at this, look how good it back taxis. Okay, let's get in the air. Oh yeah, we're in the air. Oh my goodness, I'm 30% throttle. That thing is glorious right now. Okay, safe is on. Okay, so about 30, 25% throttle. Okay, just real slow flight. I'm just gonna show you what happens when you've got safe. It just flies the plane. Okay, out of safe now. Let's do some craziness. Listen to how quiet it is. I know. It looks so cool. Guys, I gotta say, I'm loving the way this thing controls. Absolutely locked in. Real slow. Let's see the flight envelope here. I'm trying to go super slow. Let's go over to the bull camera crew. One of my favorite parts about flying UMX cutting in front of you, I'll go ahead. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about flying UMX planes is that they're one of the few small planes that actually fly like big planes. And when I say fly like big planes, I mean that you can actually get precision, precise control. And I love the way that they fly. Okay, full speed, there's full throttle. Look how fast that thing is. Good lordy lord. Look at the ups, that is amazing. Okay, now watch this inside out loop. Here we go, inside out loop. We're just gonna do a little figure eight-ish thing. Okay, and then out of the loop and coming back down right here for a low pass and right in front to my left. Beautiful, guys. This thing has a great flight envelope. You can slow it down a lot. No flaps, which is a bit of a disappointment for me. But the thing is, to be honest, it just doesn't need the flaps. And it has such gorgeous scale detailed lines that I can't complain too much. Now, you can pull the landing gear off, but of course, they're mechanically attached with a swivel and a pop. And I do not like breaking the landing gear off of these UMX planes. Okay, let's go up to the runway here. I'm gonna go up high if you go behind me. Very good. That is absolutely gorgeous, folks. Okay, Megan. Okay, going right in front, here we go. Absolutely gorgeous. Trying to go as slow as possible without losing it. And as you can see, you can really cut tight, tight, tight corners with this. Here, I'll show you some tight, Here's a tie. I didn't even set up dual rates. There's a cornhole and then safe. Do you hear a beeping or is that a bird? Oh, it's a bird. bird. Come up, please. Thank you. Okay. Full stall. Look at those birds up there. Yeah. Look at them, there's tons of them. See them up there? <laughs> Just chilling. <laughs> That's so cool. Out of the throttle all together, upside down, flipping it over. Guys, that's one of the things about this plane. You just gotta be prepared if it's small. You may have to have some good eyes for it. I'm behind you. <laughs> I wanna try a touch and go and see if we can execute that. Little planes usually have crappy landing gear. This one might not be an exception to that, but we'll find out right now. Oh, touch oh. and go with a UMX, are you kidding me? That is amazing. Let's see if we can get it around here again. OK, 
I'm going to go out behind the flag and then come right back. Let's go under the power lines and we'll double back under and see if we can do a touch and go the other way. Trying to keep it below the horizon just so we can see that beautiful purple. One minute. Okay, slowing it down here. Whoa. Guys, I don't even, I, I don't feel any problem. I didn't even set up my dual rates and expo on this plane and it just feels rock solid. I don't really have any issues there. I feel like I could maybe trim down just like a teeny, teeny, tiny bit on the elevator or possibly even go just a, just a hair forward with the battery. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. And then around our junk pile, which is customary for all farms in the United States or <laughs> other countries. Oh man. And we are getting to about 15, excuse me, about 10, 15% 15 out of throttle on uh, battery life. And that's our timer. Five. Three, two, one. All right, so we'll just try for a glorious little landing here. Look how gorgeous that is. Let's do it right here. Let's do it right here. Yeah, buddy. That is gorgeous, guys. What a great flying little plane. And yes, that was a pretty rough landing, but I wanted to show you you can do it on a... Here, this is a 37-foot wide approach. I've wasted about five or six feet. Look how fast we can get off the ground, folks. Couple clicks of trim to the left. Let's see if we can land the same direction. I'm gonna bring it in, try to be a little bit careful on the landing, about 15% throttle. Might actually loop, no, I can get it without. I don't even have to loop. Yeah, I'm gonna have to loop. As you can see, she's got lots of power and I pulled up there in a hurry. The wind kicked up. I'm gonna try to bring it in right into the wind. About 10% throttle there, about 10, out. Oh no, everybody died. Throttle cuts on. We have a little bit more power left. We're at 11.3. Oh no, did I break off one of my landing wheel things? Yes, I did. Oh, huh. see it. That's crazy. It actually broke though. No, it snapped on. It looks like it snaps on, snaps off. Okay, so camera crew is gonna hold that. Yep, it just snaps in there. That's so cool, I love it. Okay, let's snap this in. We'll show you guys how this works. Holding on there, holding on here. Middle finger on the back, so I've got some backing. I'm gonna press firmly and then snap that in. And then there is a little bit of a pin that goes in there and booyah, ready to rock and roll, guys. Okay, so hand launch. Normally you don't wanna do this with virtually no power and the wind is kinda of going that way, so I guess I gotta launch this way. Plus I got tall grass to catch. So just give it a little bit of throttle. If, this, if you're new to flying, put safe on, that's safe. And you can tell because when you roll the plane upside down, the ailerons will try to roll the plane upright. Okay, so just a little bit of throttle. I'm gonna be looking, there it is, okay? So now with safe, your turns are gonna be a little bit wider, so don't be surprised. I'm gonna just come around again. And camera crew, let's go about 20 steps to where we were. Other way, thank you, good job. Keep going that way and we're perfect there. I really wanted that line, guys, just to show you how short of a landing strip you need. You could easily fly this thing off of a basketball court. I mean, basketball court, even half court would be fine because this is probably about a half a court here. Mm -hmm. But then just looking at how great it picks up the tailwheel and it actually flies rock solid. I love the fact that the UMX planes just look so good in the air and you don't have to be an expert pilot but you know, of course, the more expertise you develop as you fly, the more fun they are, the easier they are. And I definitely love the way this thing is flying. It's definitely been a, a joy to put together because it took like five seconds. And yes, you can fly it fast on 3S. There is no reason to believe. Oh, by the way, the car that's coming down the road, I heard it earlier. Nope, it's a tractor, I lied. Somebody was driving some old timey car earlier and I don't know what model it was, but it sounded just like a tractor. And into the grass, we've managed to break off that same thing. So why don't we take a quick second because we are still flying guys. Camera crew is gonna hold this, show you that screen for just a second. Let's go ahead and pop off the landing gear, just show you how it looks with the landing gear off. 
Obviously landing gear create drag. This thing popped off again, but I don't believe it's broken. I just think it literally comes off like that. That's by design. Uh, so we must just be getting lucky on that side there. So I'm gonna just carefully pull this forward. It should unsnap. I have to support everything. I do not like taking the landing gear off of my UMX planes because I have broken them out before. And so hopefully we don't have that today. Oh, this one also popped out. I just never actually caught it. See how that popped out? Mm -hmm. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this forward and out, super easy. I'm gonna stick that in my pocket. Wasn't bad. No, not, a, not at all. And you guys can see where I stuck my battery down. I'm not saying this is perfect, but I am gonna show you where I have mine. We also made this little tape thing just to kind of hold things in and just manage the cables so it doesn't shift around a lot on us but absolutely gorgeous. So we'll go ahead and fly just a little bit longer because we have power. Camera crew's gonna trade me for a second, give you a close up shot while I get clipped back in. If you use the flying with the lanyard, make sure you get your lanyard on. It's a good idea. Okay, so hand launches without landing gear don't really change anything. So we'll do the exact same thing. I'm gonna fly with AS Trex this time. Throttle, and that thing gets out of your hand quick. And even less drag now, cornhole. Guys, just love the way this thing flies. Feel like the CG shifted back. That's weird. Oh no, I guess I guess it isn't weird because guess what we just did? We just mm -hmm. took the landing gear off, folks. They are in front of the CG. So if you do take your landing gear off, you might want to take a minute and actually shift your battery to the other side of the compartment, at least part of it. So I'm flying kind of slow. It's a little bit more wonky than it was. Definitely looks amazing in the air still. And I'm having no problems controlling it. It's just, I don't want to set the trim for no gear because I'll fly it with gear most of the time. But let's just show the people how slow you can fly this thing. Look at this. That is just amazing for a little plane. And we're not talking about like a little 400 millimeter job from Isheen. I mean, they're great fun, but this thing is actually like hobby grade sort of experience. Look how good that is and look how fast that is. Also the precision and quality of the motor is just second to none. Listen to how quiet it is. Guys, it's not even in the ballpark of the same experience. Now that's not to say that there's not fun and there's not something to be said for uh, some of the competitive offerings. We never really mean to do that here on Brian Phillips RC, but what we do want to do is we want to point out quality when we see it. And when E-Flight puts out a product, we almost always have a great experience with it. And does that not look absolutely it's gorgeous? super cool. I know some of you guys are probably thinking, but I want, it to, I want it to be in the military livery. And I kind of prefer that myself, but man, this thing looks really good now that we're in the air with it. I was a little bit reluctant at first, but the same thing was true when we did the last voodoo we did. It was mm -hmm. a competitive offering and then I ended up loving the thing. So I knew I kind of had already worked through that issue. Man, this thing is just going forever. I was just gonna say. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna just look at my screen. I'm still at like that five to 10%. It's like, it's like, hey, Brian, you can just fly forever with this. Let's see where we can land this. I'm trying to think, let's just go up in front of the runway here. Since I don't have landing gear on, I just wanna give it a nice chance to slow down. Okay, you good there, camera crew? Mm -hmm. Okay, just coming in real nice. Nothing crazy, no problems there. Throttle cuts on, I'm gonna hand the transmitter to the camera crew real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so initial thoughts on this plane are, good lordy lord lord, we've flown this forever. What is our timer at? We're at seven minutes, 46 plus our five. five. So that means we've actually got a tremendous amount of battery in this thing on a 300 milliamp hour 3S. That's amazing. And you weren't being especially like... No, I didn't feel like I was being especially aggressive or especially nice to it. Right. It was just kind of like in, in the middle of the road. Now I did have a couple of chatters and look, it didn't scrape the paint off of the wingtips. I was afraid that might've happened. Really like the wheels up experience. Really, really good for being a UMX. We were talking about that in the unbox and I said, I wonder if this thing is gonna have what it takes to actually go up and down and not like scatterbrained all over the runway. But I would say definitely this thing has great wheels up, wheels down experience. Um, it's fun without the wheels on, but definitely need to shift my battery. In fact, I'm not even gonna replace the battery. I'm just intentionally gonna leave my almost dead battery in there. We're gonna adjust this forward a little bit. 
and see what we can get out of it. So I made this little thing out of tape um, and that way it's a little easier for me to not put Velcro on my pack. And of course it's popped off again now for the second time, which is a bummer. And you know, I, I really, I, I think I owe it to the audience to go ahead and do this without taking the battery out. I wanna use the same battery to fly for a little bit longer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just uh, use this, ex this little extension cord thing. We're gonna stuff it back in on the other side. And then we're just gonna close the lid and see what we've got. Now that should make it a little bit more nose heavy. I'm curious how stable it's gonna fly. Camera crew, if you wanna trade. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get clipped back in. We're at 11 volts, folks. That is a huge amount of battery capacity. If we're getting 15 minutes of flight time, That's that would have been about 12 minutes and uh, you know, 30 seconds would be safe probably. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we've got left in the tank here. Okay, throttle cut is off. Oh man, that is so gorgeous now. Look at that. Almost hands off. Got a little bit of roll in it. Oh man, that is so good, folks. Just getting a couple of clicks of trim on that just so I can, you know, 40%, 30% in and just nothing else, guys. Oh, that looks so good. So crispy and delightful. Guys, you can't do that with uh, other competitive brands. You just can't. Let's go back to the bowl. The bowl was working really good for this thing. Right on the front edge. Perfect right there. So folks, if you haven't experienced the UMX yet, because there was a time when the UMX was kind of the cat's meow and then they just sort of disappeared for a while. And I think a lot of that came from the chip shortage and then also COVID kind of happened. Next thing you know, they weren't even coming out with anything. And some of the ones that they had come out sort of dried up, which is too bad. Because I thought they were something else. They were one of my favorite variety of planes because when we were living in town, we couldn't come out and do this all the time. Um, the UMXs gave us that opportunity to where we could get away with it a little easier. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that you should be flying in the neighborhood or anything like that. I know things have changed a little bit since when I got into this. But at the same time, if you've got good relationships with your neighbors and you're flying a sub 250 plane, I don't think you're gonna have any issues. But again, I'm no lawyer. Just do what you think you're comfortable with and you're gonna be accountable for whatever it is you do. There's our low voltage warning. So I'm gonna actually reluctantly get into final here. I'd like to keep flying because this thing is gorgeous and super fun to fly. Look at those cool clouds, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, out of the throttle, about 10% throttle here, just kind of getting it to us. That absolutely gorgeous. Okay, coming in full flare and there it is. Okay, throttle cuts on. Now we've got 10.8 volts and under load, of course, it's gonna sag quite a bit, but let's look at our timer. We're about 12 minutes past uh, our timer of five. Now we would have been on the ground talking for probably, let's call it two and a half minutes of that. So why don't we say 12 and a half, 13 minutes of flight time. That is an amazing flight time on a 300 milliamp hour battery. And it's not like we're talking about you know, some sort of a haphazard flight where you're just barely in the air and it's not very good control. This thing is a full on hobby grade experience, but it fits in any vehicle. It's super cool. Now I gotta say the boxes on some of the UMXs are big. We got an early sample, so you guys will see that when we unbox. But the thing is, this thing is glorious. I love the way it flies. I love the way the original one flies. I still have it today. And uh, I don't hardly ever fly it though, to be honest, because it's a small plane and I like it as a decoration. It's super cool. This one here is definitely gonna get flown more. And I can definitely tell you this too, the landing gear came on and off easier than expected. And that was definitely a pure delight. I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to put them back on because I will be storing it with the, gears, the gear on it. And I'm gonna see if I can get it done. Yep, it's snapped in. Then you just snap that down and you're golden. Except, you know what guys, that's actually the wrong landing gear. So you can actually install them in the wrong spot. So don't do that like what I did. The spring actually goes back from the bogey. Okay. It looks like one of our early samples, we got a little glue on there. I wonder if they broke it in product development. <laughs> okay, so now that's snapped in there. You see what I'm talking about, the glue there? So hopefully you guys won't have that issue. I'm trying to dig the other one out of my pocket just to demonstrate that it does go on very easy. 
going to lay that right there. And then I'm going to snap this down. I don't think that's broken. I think it's actually just keyed in there because you can see it's got that D-shaped uh, opening on it. And then once you get that on there, you just snap this down and then it's allowed to wiggle just a little bit. Now I might take a drip of CA and just glue that in, I guess, but it's actually staying. So I got nothing but good to say about this. thing. It's absolutely a gorgeous flying experience. Super beautiful. I'm not sure if you're into the Fudu livery, but I definitely think it, it, it looks good. It looks cool up against the sky. It doesn't blend in quite as much as some of the military liveries, which is cool because some of those with a silver finish will blend into a sky like this, but this thing pops and I love that. And especially on the smaller planes, it's nice when you can see them a little better. So other than that, I like the top and the bottom have a different color, purple, and then there's this bright deviation in color. We've got the green on the tail either way, so it's kind of not gonna do much for you. But then this change in color helps a lot. Also, I just love the lightness of it. It's not gonna be, uh, you know, this is not gonna be the type of plane that you can crash 47 times, but where you give up on crashing 47 times, you gain good flyability. And so I'll take it. And I just got, I got to taxi this one more time for you guys. If you're not used to UMXs, you won't understand the big deal of the taxi ability on this plane. When you get these UMX planes, it used to be that they were really, really light music wire. Just look at how precise the control is on the ground, guys. I'm going to do some um, back and forth just like they would in a real one because that nose is up there. It's in their way. They can't see when they're taxiing. So they would do these S curves. And look how awesome that looks. It's just ultra realistic. And I just love the way that they control. So guys, if you're in the mood for a P-51 in Voodoo, you should check this thing out in the links in the video description below. You can buy one for yourself. Of course, we make small commissions when you buy them. After you watch one of our videos and you follow that link, you can help support us by buying from that link below. Also, if you like the video, don't forget to smash the like button. That is one of the ways that YouTube unpenalizes us for making long videos. We do long format because we think you guys deserve it and hopefully you guys agree. Long format also allows us to show the whole truth about these products that are quite expensive at times. This one's not too bad, but the thing is, whatever you're thinking, you gotta remember the last time you bought a UMX, it was pre-COVID, almost certainly. Unless of course it was the pits. Then what else did we do? We, we did one did other UMX. Timber, the timber. Um, the timber has, I don't think it's new though. And then also there was the Cessna Citation UMX, but that was pre-COVID all the way through COVID. Yep. So guys, we love the UMX line. We wish we had a little bit more to bring to you right now, but if we're going to be bringing few, I want them to be awesome. And I can tell you this, this thing is awesome. It is one of the best small planes we have right now in the fleet. And we are super happy to be bringing you this early release. So guys, check it out. There's a link in the video description below. We're very glad to be bringing you these things and we're so glad that you're watching our videos. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments. We're doing our best to keep up and we're doing a really bad job right now because we've been so busy with footage. Uh, but the thing is we hope to get a little bit caught up, but you know what that means? That means snow's gonna be falling soon. Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes me depressed to think about it. So don't forget to get out there and fly, guys. It's going to be cold in the United States um, in just a few short months. We're going to have snow flying, right? Yep. Like, really? We could. I mean, it, hopefully it's like four short months. No, it'll be a few. It's going to be double. sooner sooner than that. Yeah. I mean, look at that field over there. It's all yellow. Yep. The soybeans are turning. They went from green to yellow. It felt like, like overnight, but days. it's been in the process of the last about week or so. And when that happens, same thing with the uh, corn, it's gonna be harvest literally in a month. It's gonna be out of the fields. Mm -hmm. Oh, that means that winter's coming. So don't forget to get out there and fly guys. Do it while you can. And if you like flying something like this, check it out in the links in the video description below. Great flying plane. By the way, I had mud on my prop. I don't know if that was from the last landing. Hmm. Probably. Probably. Because I didn't feel like it was vibrating at all. Absolutely gorgeous plane. Great job, E-Flight. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. We're going to do the Unbox Build Radio setup as part of the maiden flights today for your viewing pleasure. So stay tuned. Here's your, we have a box. We're opening it right now. It's going to be pretty exciting stuff. It's like a big surprise. What could possibly mm -hmm. be in here? 
I have no idea and I still have no idea. It just says the number three. Three. <laughs> so it's a box. It's a white box. Wow. It's an invisible. Invisible plane? Something. Oh my goodness, what do we have here? We have a UMX, the latest and greatest UMX from Horizon. This is a UMX P51. Oh yeah, baby. Amazing in the voodoo livery. Look at that, that is absolutely fantastic. Super bright colors. And yes, this thing is upgraded. It's got higher power handling. I believe we can go all the way up to 3S on this thing and it looks really cool. I'm actually kind of glad it doesn't have the bubble top, even though that is one of the things that is customary on the Voodoo. So everything looks just super detailed. Oh, whoa, is there a battery loading on the bottom? Oh, they have a bottom tray, that's so nice. Okay, JST connector, and uh, it just has a little compliance label in there, but otherwise this thing is uh, definitely gonna be sub 250. We have the long throw linear servos. They are removable landing gear. You can just snap these forward. I don't like snapping them off. A steerable tail wheel. I don't like snapping them off because it is very easy to break that part if you're not careful. So obviously that is one of the reasons why we love doing the unboxings for the UMX planes because it's like a 10 second thing. And then normally you would have a manual in here somewhere, but we are not getting manuals now for some reason. And I think that's probably gonna get fixed pretty quick. So at this point, that's the whole unbox. <laughs> pretty amazing. Okay, so what do we have to do to take this thing from being in the box to being a flying plane? Good question. We have to set up a radio so that we can control it and we have to get a battery figured out. Okay, so. Since we don't have a manual, we get to figure this stuff out. Oh, yay. So obviously I use an NX-8. This is a really good transmitter. We fly every plane that we've done for a long time on this. I've had 18 channel transmitters and I've had, uh, you know, all sorts of, actually quite a few in the, in the, in the middle too. Mm -hmm. But this will be a perfect size. Uh, NX-6 would do fine for something like this, but I've been suggesting the NX-8 for a long time. And we just finally ran into, on the F-16 Thunderbirds, we just finally fan in, ran into a situation where I really kind of needed the 10 because I wanted to have two more functions and I didn't have them. So there are a series of smart batteries. And when I say smart, they're Spectrum batteries, but they're not necessarily smart per se because they don't have the smart chip in them. This one does have the smart chip. And these ones are non-smart, but they're in the Spectrum smart uh, line up because you can't fit this portion of the battery actually has a smart chip in it and as you can see you've got your balance uh, there's no balance lead your discharge lead and then there's this is the smart pin and so that's not going to work very good unless you have the correct adapter because we did note that there was a JST on there so there's a JST adapter that you can get that's going to allow you to use the smart batteries and all sorts of different choices, okay? So this is gonna allow you to go from a JST into the new smart connector, but you of course lose your smart pin, okay? But that's not what we need. We need to go through our smart connections and see if we have any that will take us back to a JST. So we'll be right back. Okay, so if you're trying to use one of the new smart packs, the adapter, I don't even exactly know if the adapter exists yet, but this is the closest adapter we have and obviously that's not gonna work but this is gonna allow you to use your old micro pH equipped 2S packs as well as the new micro pH equipped. This is a micro pH as compared to a Hextronics. This happens to be 3S, that's 2S, but there's um, just an, a little bit of difference in the way that they line those up. It's gonna allow you to use your old 2S packs that you had from E-Flight, and then you can plug into your battery on your airplane here. Okay, so now if you have the newer 3S packs, which we're gonna obviously be flying this on 3S because it's just more cool on, with a little bit more speed, and this can be quite a fast little UMX. Ultra Micro Extreme is what UMX stands for in case you weren't aware of that, and this plane comes equipped with 
AS3X and safe. So artificial three axis stabilization. So when the wind pushes the wing, then the ailerons will help keep it, um, you know, in the same direction, um, attitude, both pitch and roll. And then of course the elevator is gonna respond on the pitch axis and then the rudder will respond in the yaw axis. So any environmental impact on this plane that isn't coming from your input, it's gonna resist, that's AS3X. And then on top of AS3X, safe, sensor-aided flight envelope will keep the plane in an auto-leveled configuration. It's also gonna limit your bank angles. Now you can set that up differently if you're in a plug-and-fly configuration, but since this is a bind-and-fly basic, that means that you actually can use right out of the box, set it up. So we're gonna go through that right now. Just full disclosure, I'm gonna be using 300 milliamp, 3S packs, they look just like this. There is a Hextronics balance lead and then a GST plug. Now, that is a little bit advantageous. Now, I believe you can run this on 2S as well, but I'm gonna be flying ours on 3S. I don't know that we can do this yet. Of course, we could build an adapter and I'm sure there's an adapter, but when you're charging, just keep in mind, charging is one of the things you have to figure out when you get a new plane. So one of the things we've done is we recommend getting the S155 because it's a very inexpensive option. It goes up to 4S. In this case, you're gonna be charging two or three S. And so you can charge uh, one, two, three, or four S on this, and you can charge on the S2200 dual charging at 200 watts per channel. This is only 55 watts on one channel only, but it does come with a larger connector, the IC3, as well as the IC5 which is the IC5 and the IC3. Um, and then the old version was the EC, which was blue and it was simpler like this, okay? So it doesn't have the smart pin. Okay, so what does that mean for you? Well, that means if you do have your adapter and you can put this 450 in there, I don't know for sure if it'll fit, but let's just show you guys at home real quick if it'll fit. We can't tell you what the CG is because we don't know. So we're just gonna open that. Looks like a little bit of glue on there. That's not so great. I believe this will physically fit. Nope, it does not fit. So I would not recommend the 450 and it's probably not gonna give you the right CG anyway. Ooh, you know what? Maybe you could if you went sideways. There's just that bulge on the battery. So I'm not sure I'm willing to sacrifice the plane to, to stuff that in there. And then of course, once you've flown, it might bulge just a little teeny bit if you're really riding it hot. So let's just assume for now, for the moment, that this 450 is gonna be too big, and so we'll rule that out of our consideration. But you can charge this battery, just keep in mind, because it's got the IC2, you need an IC2 adapter that's gonna allow you to charge it with an IC3, okay? And because that's a smart battery, you just plug it in, it knows what the settings are based on what you set up, and then it automatically initiates the smart charge which is really nice. As you can see, it's really hard to film that screen because the exposure. So we'll just go ahead and unplug that real quick and undo the adapter and put it back in the row. Now those batteries are really popular in the micro or the small helis. This is a 2S. So it's got a single cell here in series with another cell here. And then the output is on the outside two pins. So you'll notice it's just one but this is not a smart lead. This just happens to be a micro pH lead. So in order to charge that, you get this weird adapter that comes with a micro pH input here. And you plug the micro pH input to this adapter. And then you use the Hextronics 2S pin balance lead. You plug that into your charger. Now I'll charge it over here just so you guys can see. Immediately it comes up with the data for the cells. And then you plug in the output lead and then you would press play. And in this case, since I'm set at 2.2 amps, you would have to turn that down so that it's not gonna overcharge. So let's say I wanna set it to about, I could charge that at 3.3 amps. And it already knows it's 2S because it knows the cell count. And then this would start charging and then you can scroll down and see what your voltage is and then the impedance between the cells of course would show up where the uh, resistance, the internal resistance. Uh, this of course will work on the dual channel charger as well. Of course, I charged these before we started the video because I knew we were gonna be doing this shortly. Again, I'll be using the 300. Now, the reason the 300 is so handy is because you don't need to use this micro pH to JST adapter inside of the airplane. So you save a little bit of weight there. 
but then you have the added benefit of the additional charging port, which is really nice. That balance lead is handy if it's a not smart pack. And you're like, but Brian, how do I plug a JST into there? Exactly. That was the next thing I was gonna bring up, and that is because we go full circle on Brian Phillips RC, we show the entire thing so that you guys don't have to wonder. So this is an IC3, this could also be an EC3. You don't need the smart lead because there is no smart status to be transferred back and forth. No transmission of that data because it's not a smart battery. And then you would charge it just like any other 3S pack. It happens to be 0.3 because that was the last setting that I used. And then basically we're just gonna go down to start and start. So there you go. Okay, so you can have that charging while you're going. And of course ours is already charged. So you just unplug it here and you can unplug it here and you're ready to rock and roll for your next one. Okay, so continuing along, this is kind of our unbox build radio setup for a UMX. It's very simple because all we have to do is charge the battery and put it in. Most people are just gonna skip over that, but here on Brian Phillips RC, we wanna talk about all the details because we know if you're new to the hobby, we wanna give you the assistance you need to get started. So camera crew, and I are gonna go through the entire radio setup. Now this comes with a four bladed prop. I noticed that the spinner is pretty big on this. That is a little bit different panel line it looks like than the original P51. And uh, I do love the way that that looks. It is really cool. This looks like it's a lot of decals though. One disadvantage on UMX planes is if you ever have to get inside of them to work on them, you do have to cut through the side here. And the side meaning, if you come over here, you can see what I'm talking about. There's kind of the seam here, and you have to cut along the seam right there, and then that seam kind of deviates right through the middle of this decal, and you would have to take your finger now, or your finger, and you can kind of deflect, and you can see where there's that little de distinction there. You mm -hmm. see that? Mm -hmm. And you would cut that all the way down the length, and you're like, oh, I don't want to cut a new plane in half. Don't worry, it's not a big deal, because then you put a, a clear piece of tape over it, you'll never know any better. And then the next time that you go in there, because it lays on top of a decal, you can peel very carefully off the tape that you've cut in half and then reapply a new one. And you really need to put a couple of pieces, but this decal happens to hold that top and bottom together. Okay, so getting back to the point, we need to turn on our radio system. As with most other planes we work with, we have the throttle cut turned on and engaged so that we're being safe. Throttle stick is down. This is the throttle, rudder, elevator, and ailerons. Now, because this has safe, uh, safe select, you'll be able to turn that on and off. You'll be consuming one of your channels. Of course, we have eight channels here, so we should be totally good. And we have to set up a profile for this. And so as you can see, it says F16 Thunderbird, uh, Thunderbirds, 80 millimeters, 121 colon. So that means that that's 121st plane in my radio system. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Of course, we use them to our full extent here on Brian Phillips RC because we have a lot of planes. Okay, so come on around. So the first thing you do to get in there is you can either hit back and cancel at the same time, which will shortcut to the models, or you can click and scroll all the way down to system setup, disconnect RF, and then this orange light will go off indicating that the radio is turned off. That does not mean that you're safe. It means that the radio is no longer in control of your plane. So if you had been bound and set up on that plane, then that would actually allow you to lose control. So be careful. That's why they warn you. So then go into model select, scroll down, add new model. I'm gonna go to create, it's an acro. Now, if it was on heli or sailplane or quad or something like that, then just scroll over to acro and then create. It takes a few seconds for that to actually happen. So just be patient for five to 10 seconds. I've noticed that the more planes we have, the longer this takes. Hmm. So once it does, then basically it's going to start up back at the system setup and you can go to model type, which is the same thing we just said. If you change this, it resets your whole platform, so be careful. And then model name. And also, just to be clear, you can download bind and fly model profiles, but you have to have your Wi-Fi on. I always leave my Wi-Fi off on this thing because I don't wanna waste the radio um, power. And also I have updated firmware of late so I don't need to have that on. That's the only reason I use the, the Wi-Fi. But if you're doing a bind and fly basic profile that you're downloading from the web, you can download it directly to an NX8, NX6, NX10, and, and so on and so forth. The iX line, of course, is gonna be uh, equipped with that Wi-Fi feature too. I have never done it because here on Brian Phillips RC, we wanna educate you guys on how to get the most out of your very expensive equipment, just like this and just like this. We love these things, but we also understand that they are not the easiest to 
toys, if you want to call them toys. We think that the UMXs are like an, a very high level toy. And then we get into these, which would be like hobby grade. This is a hobby grade airplane. So make no mistake, you can really control it. There's very precise controls. It's not gonna be like elevator up, elevator down, and that's it. No, you have discrete input and control, very many precise input points, and you can fly them just like a big plane. In fact, you can fly them in some levels of wind too. So we're probably gonna demonstrate that today, as you can see from the gigantic windsock in the background. It's been kind of variable though, so I'm not sure how it's gonna do today. One thing to keep in mind if you're new to flying radio controlled airplanes is that warbirds are a, a, you know, like a really fun and cool thing that you're gonna wanna get into right away. But just keep in mind, there are easier planes to fly, but this might not be a terrible, um, you know, I, I would say it'd probably be a bad choice for a beginner plane, but you could make it work within your first second plane. You know, it's not the end of the world if you would pick this. Um, but it, you know, to get a, a Sport Cub UMX, uh, is going to be a lot better choice, for instance. So there's a million different ways you can go about it. Nowadays, SAFE is equipped on almost every bind and fly basic plane. And so as a result, you're going to think I can get that plane because it has SAFE. And that plane does have SAFE. But just keep in mind, SAFE makes a plane easier to fly. It doesn't mean that you know how to command and control the sticks when the plane turns around and you know the controls reverse. I don't even think about it anymore. That's a great place to be. You want to get there as quick as you can and it does take time and practice. So if you're wanting to supplement some of your skills with Real Flight 9.5. We have links to that in the video description below and pretty much always have that on our website, www.brianfolksrc.com. Buy from the links, you'll help support us. And by the way, I am not a simulator learner. I was a crash it and feel the pain and financial suffering from crashing so that you can learn quicker. And some people are not like that. Some people, first of all, maybe they can't afford to crash a little $100 plane and spend 15, $20 every couple of days to fix stuff. Um, for me, it was just mostly hot glue and CA, and that's how I fix stuff. But I learn better from having pain attached to the failure. So some of you guys are gonna feel exactly the same way, but I definitely think that looking back on my experience, and I'm about eight years into this, flying radio controlled airplanes, not radio controlled stuff, I've been doing that my whole life. I think that it would have been helpful for me as a early pilot to have a simulator ready to go. Now, that being said, I did have a simulator but it was just like the free one that you can get online and it's just kind of garbagey and the physics are okay, but then I was fortunate enough my grandpa had, had given me a transmitter, so I had that. Well, if you don't have the transmitter, you need to have a real mm -hmm. physical transmitter. If you're just using the keyboard or using your smartphone, it's just not quite the same. You need to have sticks involved. You don't have to use the exact transmitter, but you can. With Real Flight, you can get the dongle and it's cheaper, I believe, than actually getting the one with the wired transmitter. But I found that the wired transmitter is the best choice because then you can be charging this after a long day of crashes and frustration. You can go into the office where it's dark and you know comfortable and air conditioning and all that stuff. You can turn on the PC and just practice for a few hours and you really don't, um, you don't feel the pain and suffering of those crashes. So just, if you have to learn on a simulator, it's gonna be a lot easier to be distracted and your brain will associate pain with failure better if you're flying a real plane. And also it's just super exciting. There's something about the realness of it. And so I don't know if that's a kid thing or an adult thing, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna be, oh goodness gracious, I'm like almost 40. Um, but as a kid, it would have been nice because my parents would have been buying stuff for me. So maybe it would have been nice to have that. But as an adult, it's, it's good to be able to, you know, uh, have that real experience. So it's just something sat satisfying to me about it. So you may not be like me, but anyway, so getting back to the point, we're gonna continue radio setup. We're in the naming part now. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna go back into model name. So this is model 122 colon space. And obviously these more expensive transmitters, the NX8 in this case, um, is going to allow you to have hundreds and hundreds of transmit or hundreds and hundreds of profiles in here. And I have an SD card, it's like a one gigabyte SD card. There's also another SD card about here inside if you were to pull this thing apart and that's the internal drive and then there's also an external drive. So if this ever gets like in a fire or something crazy and you think you've lost everything and all hope, just take it apart, you can actually get to that. Uh, don't do that unless you know it's destroyed. Like if you run it over with your truck or car or something like that, you may be able to salvage what you had in there. So just keep in mind, that's a good reason to back this up and pull it, put it on the computer once in a while. All right, so we're gonna name this. This is gonna be the P51. 
uh, UMX. So we'll scroll this in and come back. I do use the legacy keyboard, which is an option on the NX. They have a newer keyboard, but I prefer the legacy. Okay, so we have the name there. Uh, it's 122nd model and it says P51 Voodoo UMX. Okay, so I always put the size class at the end because you know you think this is the only plane I'm ever gonna have. Well, that's not true, <laughs> you're gonna have more. So if you get this and you like it, you're probably gonna get a different size class. And we happen to have another P51 in a Voodoo uh, finish. So, all right, so aircraft type, this is where you set up the wing. So if it had flaps, you would just scroll over and say like one aileron, one flap. Now, of course, on this one, uh, which is a bit of a bummer for me here on Brian Phillips RC. You guys, if you know anything about me, I love flaps. Uh, you don't need flaps on these UMX planes, but that does not stop me from having added flaps. And interestingly enough, it was one of the things I did when our channel first started, as I said, I demand flaps and we could never get them with flaps. And so I would figure out a way to add flaps. And we have flaps on, actually, let's just uh, take a second. We'll just show the people. This is one of the things we did. We gotta be careful not to show over here. So we have, Flaps, flaps, flapperons, flaps, flaps, and flaps. Not flaps, because I got that from somebody else, and that thing didn't have a motor. So just to give you an idea, when, when this uh, Cessna 182, it's very dusty, so forgive me. I actually have a second receiver that didn't have flaps or LEDs. <sighs> That's gross, that there's so much <laughs> dust on it. But as you can see, the, the flaps and everything are a big part of my reality that was an early early brian phillips rc toy and same thing with these things but this is the old p51 and i did install flaps on it but you know what i tried to make it 4s or excuse me i tried to make it 3s and i basically think i killed that one so it does fly on 2s originally this one flies on 3s out of the box which is the way it should be and so anyway one of my big issues was that the flight envelope on the p51 didn't really, call, especially on the UMX, didn't call for needing flaps, but I still like flaps. So I'm a little bit disappointed, but we'll see how the thing flies. And if it demands it, maybe we'll look into it because this is a different controller board. It is different in, in its function and its plugins because these things have feedback for telemetry too, which is really big. Um, because before it was just all timer based and everything, but we'll get into that a little bit later because when you have a battery that's gonna be discharged, you wanna know. Okay, so continuing onward, aircraft type, wing is normal, tail is obviously normal. And then of course we can actually pick a P-51 in this picture. There we go, okay, so P-51. Flight mode setup, we're gonna have to do safe select at some point, so I'm not sure how we're gonna do that yet. I think we're gonna leave the flight mode out for now. Normally we do bind and flight basic. We've been setting up flight modes, but I don't think we have to do it on a UMX because it's just an assignment on a channel. Okay, so we'll walk out. You can see we've got the model pulled up. It shows a timer. So we're gonna click and the first thing we're gonna do is set up throttle cut, set it to switch H. So when we pull that switch toward our belly, it locks the throttle at the low range, which is a safety feature that you definitely wanna get used to. You'll, know, you'll notice me saying it a lot. Um, it's one of the very few things that I kind of beat you guys over the head with. It's not because I'm beating you over the head, it's because it's just a habit um, that I've come up with and the habit is a good habit because I don't like getting cut. And yes, I have been cut by UMX props. That is one of the few props I have been cut by and it was on that plane right there. That was the um, Aero, am I saying Aero Commander? Aero Commander? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Aero Commander is one of the planes that cut me. And it, I mean, it was like a really small cut, but some of you guys have been cut on big planes with big props. So just remember, it's one of the very few actual safety issues with flying radio controlled airplanes and helis. Is, is lipo safety and prop safety. Those are pretty much the two things. I mean, believe it or not, people don't crash into themselves as often as you might think. They might crash into the camera person, but not themselves it's that much. Like I mean, it does happen and people do get hurt, but it's, you know, it's very few and far between. Yeah. And when you crash into yourself with the plane, you sort of know what you got coming because you controlled it in yourself. <laughs> um, anyway, okay, so all joking aside, guys, be careful out there. I want to keep good reputation here. So throttle cuts on, throttle curve we don't mess with, and then we can set up some of this stuff later. Timer, I'm gonna go ahead and set for five minutes, and I'm gonna set the one out active. Oops, active. And that just means anytime over 25%, it starts the timer. At one minute, you know what, let's just do voice. I kind of like the voice at one minute. It just tells you one minute remaining. And then at 10 seconds, I want voice, and then expiration, I want tone and vibrate with a one minute tone every minute thereafter. 
Okay, and then telemetry will auto configure. So as you were hearing me say earlier, once you go over 25%, even with the throttle cut on, it's gonna go ahead and start the countdown. You can cancel that and clear it. Okay. Clear takes you to your volume. And I always say that wrong. Okay, cool. So normally I would have gear up here, but there's no retracts on this. Of course, it's just gonna have like the basic fixed gear that can be pulled off. I think a P51 looks really good with the gear down. So I don't have a big problem with that. If this was an EDF jet, I would be very inclined to get rid of those landing gear uh, for flights, especially on a UMX, because UMX are one of the historically only small planes that will track straight on a runway. We've seen a lot of others. You may see them in the background, they're very fun planes, but they definitely don't have good ground handling at all. In fact, they're pretty terrible, uh, downright terrible on most of them but the Horizon Hobby products are one of the few that have light enough landing gear that still have some viability for ground handling. And wheels up, wheels down is a huge part of piloting planes. So if you're trying to learn to fly bigger planes or maybe your budget isn't big enough to handle, you know, something more like this behind me, um, then this is a great place to be starting. But I've always loved UMXs and yes, they are sub 250, which is nice in case the remote IV. Uh, legislation causes some sort of interference with our ability to fly. So far, I think we're good for a while and we will be sharing our thoughts on that if anything changes. But for now, we're just going to fly. We're just going to fly until they tell us not to. And between you and me, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I think that there's already resolution happening behind the scenes. We just don't know about all of it because it doesn't matter yet. Um, okay, so getting back to the point, and by the way, there's tons of binding flies coming out. So Bruce, I hate to break it to you. Bruce, if you're listening, X-Jet. You, you are, even though you want to be right, and I know you have a lot of great points, and I really do, I feel your pain. Um, we're going to overcome these things. It's not that big a deal. So at this point, we've got our timer set. We've got our throttle cut set. Now we can go ahead and plug in the battery and be safe, of course. So we're going to hold this upside down now. There is something to be said for stalling out a prop like this. You see how it's over my wrist. If that were to start right now, what would happen? Nothing. It'd probably catch the ESC on fire because it's not going to be strong enough to push me out of the way. But on a big plane, it probably would just push your hand out of the way and you would get cut really bad on the way out. So I'm just gonna stall it out. And usually that's the only time you're really vulnerable is that first time just when you haven't vetted the system. So I'm gonna put the tail and the prop on the ground and I'm gonna lay this down. Now you'll note I don't have any Velcro in here, okay? So if you have one of these Velcro configurations like this where you don't have any Velcro, but you do have this really nice cover, which by the way, wish they would have had that on the first versions. But all I'm gonna say is this. It makes me nervous to fly a high G maneuvering plane with a battery that's loose, okay? So we're probably gonna have to do a little something for battery retention, and that might be Velcro. And by the way, yours will come with a little strip of Velcro, but in my case, I don't think mine comes with Velcro just because it's an early sample. Um, obviously, sometimes when we're doing these early reviews so that they're prepared and ready for the release date, we're actually waiting for the containers to show up in North America so that they can be uh, disseminated you guys, even on the pre-orders. Okay, so I'm looking, I got some double-sided tape here, got a little bit of Velcro here. Ooh, look, here's a UMX piece. See this? I actually really hate Velcro, okay? <laughs> so if you look, that's the super good Velcro. Oh man, it dropped. And when I say Velcro, I mean hook and loop if you're, mm -hmm. you know, concerned about, you know, branding and stuff. I really don't care what brand, I'm just saying hook and loop in general. So it was really stuck in there. Hey, be careful. I know. That's why I was getting forceps. Now you don't need forceps to do this. I'm just being careful because this is a beautiful plane. I don't want to screw it up. Okay, so now this has the double-sided tape, or excuse me, the uh, sticky part on the back. And so we could just put this onto the battery and then we could stick it on there. But when you do that, you have to make sure that you understand that once you've committed to that position, that's the way the battery is going to go into perpetuity. And that's part of the reason why I don't like doing this. So what I have done in the past is I've done a number of different things that allow me to have some flexibility and go from battery to battery. Oh, look, there's another UMX Velcro, in fact. But what I was thinking is if I had a bigger piece of Velcro, sometimes the other hook and loop, and this is just a trick you guys may want to copy, you may not want to. Um, this is just another style. Let's see if it has enough retention. See, you don't need like perfect retention because you do have the door closure and you are gonna be plugged into the wire. But if you have enough of this, this will actually hang on okay. So the other thought would be you make some sort of a housing that hangs onto this, like a piece of tape, 
And so I'll show you what I'm gonna do. And this is something I've done. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the UMX hook and loop. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll take the tape, and this is this just regular tape. There's nothing magical about it. I'm not gonna stick it to the battery. I'm gonna use it upside down. So I'm just rotating it around, arts and crafts style on Brian Phillips RC. And then I'm gonna pull out enough that I can get all the way back around, okay? So now that's taped down. So the sticky part is facing you guys. So I'm gonna just rotate now and just go all the way back around onto itself. And this is just as simple as it is. It doesn't, you don't need to make it any more complicated than this. This adds a little teeny bit of weight. Let's call it, you know, like half a gram. Okay, see, now you've got a sleeve that hangs onto your battery for you. And then you can actually take and use the Velcro, but it looks like this Velcro is a little bit longer and I would like to capture that full amount of uh, retention. So I'm gonna take this tape. Again, I'm just gonna double it up a little bit so it's a little bit wider. And you see what I'm doing? I'm just holding onto the tape, rolling it around the loop. And guys, there's a lot of people that do reviews and they do a really good job on YouTube of showcasing these great products. If you wanna help support Brian Phillips RC, one of the few places where you can go and we share little details like this, then buy the planes from the links. That's the number one way you can help us financially as a small business, whatever you wanna call us that we're doing here on YouTube. And then also the second thing you can do is obviously come watch the videos, like them, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and you'll be alerted to all the new and free content because it's only as free as whatever the advertisers paid us to play the video. And yes, we do have very, very limited control over what plays for ads. Uh, we can choose to exclude certain sectors of marketers, and that's pretty much the extent of our control over that um, on the stuff that we have on a monetized channel. But YouTube pretty much controls that, just so you guys know. We're just the benefactors if a uh, video does well, and the not benefactors if it does terrible. All right, so there's your Velcro. Now, the cool thing about this, too, is you can take and you can pull that battery out, okay? And I've got a little bit of a little bit of sticky side exposed on this side. And all you gotta do is if you want, you can slide the battery in in a different orientation now too, if you desire, which is pretty cool. And I'm actually gonna slide it in from this side. It'll be a little easier because I lined up my tape better on this half. So you kind of see how that works and I'm just fighting with my labels, but then once you get it on there, you can slide it on, which works pretty nice. So that's one way you can do that. The other way you can do it, of course, is to just literally put the Velcro straight on the battery. I just hate doing that because I know that as soon as I do that, the next plane will literally need it on the other side for whatever reason. And I've been burned by it so many times that it's like you have Velcro on every side of every battery you have and you add a lot of weight to them and then you have a lot of insulation on the outside of what you'd like to be heat dissipation. So we'll pause, I'm gonna play with this just a little bit more, get it perfect and come right back. All right, so one other thing we did, we just took a little bit of baby powder and we put it on the outside of the battery and that gave us a little bit of an advantage on being able to slide it on and off. So real simple. And then you can reuse that in a perpetuity. So what I'll do is when I'm done flying this plane, I'll actually leave that inside of the plane. And it works out really sharp because then you can get in there and actually get good retention without giving up on having to have Velcro strapped to your battery into perpetuity. So this link, this is where you're gonna be plugging in. So I'm gonna stick this on here. And since we don't know exactly where CG is, we're just gonna err on the safe side. And the other thing is you'll note that this moves forward or backwards. So obviously that's gonna be a factor because we have chosen to put our Velcro. Oh, of course, now the Velcro has pulled off. So because we chose to do the Velcro the way we did, that's gonna allow our battery to slip a little teeny bit. So you have to position it just so and use your wires to help kind of manage the position. So for the sake of time, we're gonna pause and fix this. Okay, so I've got that back in there. And what I meant by use the cables is you can kind of like slap the cables in there and you can see there's just a little bit of play forward and backward. Um, but the idea is that, you know, like if that lid comes out, I mean, I'm moving that hard. So the Velcro is gonna hang on to it or the hook and loop, I should say. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start this one up real quick. And it's possible we'll just like end up walking straight outside to fly. But of course you guys will know the flight will come first and uh, the unbox build radio setup, of course, will kind of just follow, um, or it'll be a separate video. So now, once you get it in there, you can just flip it over on its hind legs. 
wait for everything to initiate and it may not initiate automatically because you have to bind. So now I'm gonna click. Normally your transmitter can be off if you want or you can go into the bind menu and go to bind. These things auto bind, they go to automatic bind if it isn't started up with a transmitter that is already bound to it, okay? So now we can see we have elevator, we have a roll. Looks like differential too, so that's pretty cool. Y'all left, y'all right, and there is not much movement. So now I'm gonna watch this. Oh yeah, I could tell they mm -hmm. already. So safe is off now. And you can tell because of the amount of deflection Safe is on now, or excuse me, AS3X is on and safe is off, okay? So you can also tell by flipping the plane upside down, we also didn't see the motor start, so we're safe, okay? Nothing. Safe is on, it's trying to find the quickest route to level. Also look at the elevator, it's all the way up, and now it's level, and now it's gonna be pointed down because it's trying to level the aircraft. There's very little movement on a small plane. It's kind of strange, you'd think it'd be a huge amount of movement and you can actually see it, but not so much. Okay, now, throttle cut is on. I'm gonna just quick test the throttle, it's working, as in the throttle cut is working. Throttle cut is off. I'm gonna hold the plane. Oh man, that's a wow. lot of thrust. Okay, <laughs> throttle cut's on. I'm gonna clear my timer. Now I'm gonna scroll over. I'm gonna click and then scroll down to this. I'm gonna go to travel, reverse, and I'm gonna reverse the gear channel because I want safe to be off, and it is. You also note that the AS3X is working now. So when I lift the tail, it's gonna push up. Yep, up, down, okay. Now I'm gonna lift the tail, watch the elevator go up, down. It's hard to see on camera, but I can see it in real life. Now I'm gonna take and roll the plane. I'm gonna look at the aileron, up, down. Now I'm gonna take the other aileron, and I'm gonna go up and down, up, down. Now the reason I did both is because I almost certainly know that they've used dual ailerons. And the way I know that is because there's differential going on. One goes up higher, then the other one goes down. That's called differential. And that is a setting that must be mixed into the board because we did program in differential because differential is here. Nope, it's not there because you have to have dual ailerons to, to have access to that. Okay, so cool. Now the next thing we can do is we can go into telemetry and you can see what's already set up. Okay. Okay, so that's an annoying alarm. 12.3 volts. There's your voltage. So that's the screen I like to have when I'm flying these UMX planes. So we're at 12.3. We are not gonna have a per cell value, but we have at least the nominal voltage, which is what we've been asking for for years and we finally have it. So guys, without further ado, I can't wait to fly this thing. Looks like the wind conditions are okay and the cloudy sky will make for a good backdrop. So I can't wait to get this thing in the air. We love bringing you guys new early releases and this is no different here. So we're super excited to bring you this P51 Voodoo by E-Flight one of the best brands out there and we really do enjoy their quality products. And in comparison to some of the competitive offerings, they always seem to be just a notch better, which is really nice. And so we have always appreciated the E-Flight lineup even before we were working with them. And by the way, we work with their direct competitors and some of their competitors. And so we really don't care what each of these ones, they can fight against each other. We just want good planes and they do a good job of good planes. So we give them kudos for that. And uh, we just got done doing that one not too long ago, super complicated. Uh, plane scares me to death still, but you know what? It's really cool. And we've got tons of other ones. We just did this one, the Beechcraft, Beechcraft. amazing plane. Super I love cool. that plane. I kind of want to go fly it now. But the thing is, we've got this beauty right here to bring for you. So we're going to do that right now. And by the way, the pilot, the pilot has a little bit of detail on it. I was just noticing the pilot. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of weird. It's, it's got that mask on and then it's painted black and there's no instrument cluster. So I'm not sure if that's an early sample thing or if that's just mm. the way that they designed it. But I tend to think that might be an early sample thing. So also there may be a decal pack that comes with this. I didn't get a decal pack with ours, so I'm not sure. I don't mean to lead you guys wrong, but we love flying these things and we love being able to have the opportunity to get them early release, but then sometimes that leaves us a little bit in the dark. So please forgive us for any details that we've mismentioned, but 3S, no flaps, no LEDs, and some of you guys are gonna not like those two last features, but it is the truth and that's what we bring here on Brian Phillips RC. So if you have more questions, leave them in the comments below. Hopefully we've answered most of your questions and we are super excited to bring this to you. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to buy this plane or planes like it from the links in the video description below, or you can head over to brianphillipsrc.com and check out the entire suite of tons of different aircraft 
And I guarantee you, if you can't find something there, you're not looking because we have literally thousands of videos on YouTube right now for your viewing pleasure and to help you make uh, RC bucks spending decisions. We want you guys to be able to get the most bang for your buck. And if you're looking between this and some other Chinese offering that maybe is a little bit more garbagey, then we'll help you pick because guess what? We probably reviewed the garbagey one too. So that being said, we hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Come back for more.